2020 Toyota Tacoma. So only by through attrition, through a number of seeing how vehicles operate differently, because very rarely do different vehicles operate the same. Here's an example right now. You can watch the gauges. You can hear the clutch engage and disengage, and you can watch the numbers as you hear the click of the clutch come in and the click of the clutch snap out. Now this does have a thermal fan clutch. As you can see, that's a fluid driven thermal fan clutch and it's actually uh, spinning very fast right now. It's spinning so fast you can't see the blades. It looks like solid, but because of the camera shutter speed, it, it looks like it's not spinning that fast. So what do we have going on here? Let's look over a uh, duration of time on how this particular vehicle has been operating. So, sorry for the glare. This is about as good as I could get because there's a strong sun out there. And um, here is the high side and low side pressures. And as you can see, I'm going all, I'm going into a minute 11 can we get in there we're going into minute 11 right now on my recording and you can see that we've been going as high as as low as somewhere about 25 psi can you see that yeah i think you can see that and i think we're going as high as 40 40 psi so that's a cycling it's been cycling constantly at the low side like this on the high side as you can see it's hitting down at 80 just over 100 and it's creeping up there oh where are we getting 114 but usually it was around just over 100 and let's go look at our temperature since we're going into uh it's for our temperature oh, that you can watch the superheat and sub cool just skyrocket up and down up and down because there's no steady state it's constantly cycling cycling so you cannot use superheat or sub cooling when you are cycling now, if we go over to our temperatures, you can see our temperature dip down, get down to about 39 degrees, and it'll go up. So we'll watch that for a cycle. There you go, 44, 45 should be kicking back in right now. There, there it goes. Now let's look what that looks like. Now our outdoor ambient temperature, 66 degrees. It's actually a little colder than that. But because we're steady and still, the air from the temperature of the engine and the radiator and anything is kind of washing around. And you can see this temperature go up there, up to 69. It's not 69 degrees outside, I can tell you that. Um, and if you look at the temperature out of the dash, right here with the field piece JLR, or the JL3HR temperature probe, see our temperature right there it goes down into 39 degrees and it goes as high as 45 degrees constant now you've seen other videos where there is no movement it's like a flat line this vehicle cycles like that other vehicles don't cycle now I'm gonna put up the rpms let's see uh, let's see the rpms right there let's get around 17 and we're gonna say we're going 30 miles an hour down the road we just don't have no air blowing over the front. I need a big fan in the front to, uh, to uh, make it seem like it was actually having a lot of hair flow going over the condenser. I'm trying to get it down around 17, 1800 RPMs. Uh, there we go. We'll hold it there for a little while and we'll see what it does to temperatures. We'll see what it does to cycling time. Oh, sorry about the air blowing right over the microphone. It probably sounds really loud to you with the air blowing. Okay, now let's... What happened to uh, our temperatures? Well, our temperature went down to 36 degrees. So on this particular vehicle, it actually makes a difference bringing it up near 2,000 RPMs. The temperature actually goes down. Other vehicles, it makes no difference at all. Let's see what the, the pressure's done. Oh, we time out? We just timed out. My 15-minute uh, uh, battery saving mode kicked in on the gauges. 
So that just messed up our uh, thing. Let's kick that back on. We'll kick back up the idle. And we'll do this as a comparison. Okay, so let's data log this. Well, you got to see what it looked like before and what the pressures were at all. You can see right there, you can see where the gauge is shut off and I just, why are we not turning on refrigerant side pressures? Oh, there we come, we're coming right over there. Let's see, this glare is just killing us. Can I give it anywhere else that looks better? No, it's just not gonna happen, guys. This is just the real world. This is not a classroom. Well, let's do this. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Focus on my hand. Because it doesn't like focusing on reflective surfaces. That's one thing I noticed about the Apple. So we're not gonna really get anything clear here because there's just absolutely no way to get a nice unreflective video. Okay, so this is idle. I have to go up to almost 2000 RPMs. Come on. And only if you do this on every vehicle Will you know if there is or is not a difference because of what kind of software the manufacturer has installed on the vehicle to control the compressor? As we know, we have a thermal fan clutch out there. Let's get in there. We're at almost 2,000 RPMs. Let's see if I could get some of this glare off for you. Well, as you can see, it looks like it's making almost no difference at 2,000 RPMs. The high side has just picked up a little bit. And let's see if it comes back in control and it starts going right back and operating like idle in a minute. I'm holding it at just, trying to hold it just under 2,000 RPMs. High side is swinging a little bit more. Our low side has a little more swing to it. And my hands are hurting because it's 36 degrees out of the dash and the air is blowing on me. So actually at 36 degrees, it's, if you hold your hand here, and uh, I'm like right there, here's my hand holding the camera and the vents right on my hand. Uh, 36 degrees starts getting But this is how the software operates the air conditioning system on this. I have shown you other vehicles where I hold it at 2000 RPMs, same scenario, and the high side pressure is dead flat, it doesn't move. The low side pressure is dead flat, it doesn't move. That's that vehicle, this is this vehicle. They are not, there is no rule of thumb. I am trying to send that message out there guys for everybody who old timers or used off the little whack off jerk off cans and tried to obtain a certain high side pressure on these newer vehicles that are controlled by software for variable displacement compressors. I'm trying to get the message out there to change this industry so they stop guessing. All right guys, I'll see you later and uh, catch you on the next one. Field piece software. Oh, by the way, for you or her new, all this gets data recorded, snapshot, and it goes to the customer. The customer gets a recording of everything that is done on every vehicle on all their cars. So there is no denying something was done or wasn't done or it did or did not achieve a certain level. You have proven it because you data logged it with Bluetooth equipment right to the software while the vehicle is running. Other shops don't do that. Don't be one of those other shops. See you guys later.